Welcome back folks, this is Shane. So firstly, just to let you know, this is part five of a series of videos much like this that I've put together covering every different type of guitar, from strats to Telecasters to Les Pauls to PRS and now to ES-335. So I had a lot of people request this video. If you do enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up. A lot of time and effort goes into this video. If we can get it up to a thousand thumbs up, I greatly appreciate it. It's not sponsored by anyone. This list took quite a while to put together because I've tested hundreds of guitars, even as a lefty, or I picked them up and checked them out as a righty. So this all comes from experience from guitars I've either owned, reviewed, or played, or even just picked up and checked out. So I hope you like this list. If you do enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up. Let's get into it. So the first guitar on this list is accessible just about anywhere in the world thanks to the magic of the internet. And this is the Harley Benton HB35CH, which stands for Cherry. It's a really beautiful instrument. Now Harley Benton have made a few design changes to this and modifications over some of the other 335s on this list, which are a straight up clone. These are slightly different. The headstock shape is obviously a point of comparison, but they also feature the toggle switch on the upper horn on the guitar instead of down near the toggle switches, which makes it quite a bit different. Now, if you ever owned a 335, I think that's actually a really great spot to be putting the toggle switch on that top horn. Nice and easy to get to, out of the way of all the rest of the controls or any kind of interference. So I really like the fact that they've put the toggle switch there. Now visually these are quite similar in terms of the body shape and all that kind of stuff and that's the whole idea of this list. We're going to find the least expensive or inexpensive alternatives to getting a 335. Now if you're a beginner or an intermediate player and you're thinking about trying a different guitar, there's never been a better time. Back even when I started 20, 21 years ago, whatever it was, there wasn't these kind of options out there. A lot of inexpensive guitars were junk. Now that can be debated that there still might be some of that out there, but if you buy a known brand these days, you're generally in for a bit of a treat. Out of all of the Harley Benton guitars that I've had my hands on personally, or I've had in right-handed that I've looked at, I've only seen one with issues, and that was one that was shipped here that just had a few scratches and marks on it, but no big deal, it still played well. This particular instrument, if you're looking for a 335, it will tick all the boxes. It has the F-holes, it has a block down the center. It looks like the classic cherry design. You can't go too far wrong with a Harley Benton these days. Let me know if you've already got one of these or if you're thinking about buying one. I'll also leave links to these in the description. The next guitar on this list is the Artis Cherry 58. I love this guitar. The first time I saw one was Brett Kingman playing one. Yeah, another Australian YouTuber. Phenomenal guitar player, great guy and just a, he's a monster. He makes everything sound good. And I heard him play one, I was like, man, I gotta get my hands on one of these. So I ended up getting one from Artist Guitars to do a review of, and for 400 Australian dollars, these are definitely one of the best 335 style electric guitars out there. These look probably more similar to an actual 335 than even the Harley Benton. The headstock design's a little bit nicer on this one, I reckon. I'll leave a, you can let me know in the comments whether you agree with that or not and it has the toggle switch placement in a more traditional area down near the volume controls. Now, these have gotten even better since I've got my hands on one many, many months ago. I liked this guitar, it was really cool. I also owned another one which we'll talk about in a moment and it, there wasn't that much of a tonal difference and there wasn't that much of a feel difference. These have a fairly chunky neck and the new factory that are producing these guitars are really, really good. I had a chance to test out a couple of Les Pauls from Artist Guitars after they changed factories, and they were so much better than what they were back in the day. Now, I've got a new one of these turning up at the house, which is a black one, so you'll see a review of that coming up in a few months. There's a bit of a back order on them, but overall, the Artist Guitar Cherry 58, if you can get your hands on one of these, they're a really beautiful instrument. I'd say you're seeing some samples of it on screen as well from my review video, but. They look the business, they sound great. And when I did a comparison up against the guitar that's worth about $2,500, there wasn't a whole lot in it. So that's why this guitar made the list. Third on this list is a guitar brand that I feel is highly underrated, and that's Reverend Guitars. They have a guitar called the Manta Ray, which is very 335 in its design, but it has a little bit more of a rock and roll slash modern look to it. The, the horns on the top are a little bit more pointy, and one of the things that separates this from your traditional 335, it has one F hole, but it also has a bass contour control, which is completely passive. I won't buy a guitar that has any kind of active electronics unless it's a bass, 
different story there. But in terms of electric guitars, I think these passive bass contour controls are fantastic. It's basically like, well, basically like, that's such a bad joke, like a boost control in many ways. You roll it up one way, the guitar gets fatter and thicker sounding, you roll the other way and it gets thinner sounding, which is a really great feature to have on a 335 star electric. And being that it's only got the one F hole, you could probably play this a lot louder and dirtier without excessive feedback. And I think that's a really cool touch. Reverend guitars are fantastic. I wish I could find them more here in Australia. The only times I usually see them is just here and there at shops or at a guitar show. They're about the only times that I see them. It's a real shame. Reverend guitars are great. They're a lot easier to find in the US. I've seen them and I purchased one one time in Florida as well. So yeah, Reverend Guitars are definitely great. Check out this Manta Ray, links will be below. Up next on the list is Gretsch. Now they make the Streamliner model, which is very ES335 in its design, except it's called the G2622. Doesn't quite roll off the tongue as well. Now they also make this in a lefty as well, and I'll be doing a full review of this at lefthandedguitarworld.com as well. If you wanna check that out in your lefty, you get a kick out of that. So the interesting thing about this particular instrument over the others is there's a few differences. One, it has something that I'm not a huge fan of, but it's not a deal breaker. I've seen this a number of times in person as well. I don't like the block inlays. I think they're just a little bit too large, but let me know what you think. And I, I don't like the block inlay on the first fret. I think it's unnecessary, but yeah, let me know what you think of the block inlays on this instrument. Odds are you're seeing some uh, pictures on screen. So yeah, I just think it looks a little bit strange, but I love the fact you can get these in different colors to your conventional cherries or your tobacco burst kind of colors. I, I love this green. I think it looks really, really cool. Now in terms of the pickups, it's a different set of pickups. In the neck, we get a Broadtron BT2S. So these will give you a very different sound to that classic humbucker tone. These will have a little bit more snap on the note. So if you like a little bit of extra high end, this would be a really great choice. So we get the same pickup in the bridge as well, which is the BT2S. This will be more suited to various styles of guitars. Like a 335 can cover pretty much anything from jazz to blues to rock and roll. I've even some, seen some people play heavier styles of music on them, but these pickups will give you a bit more of a classic rockabilly sound if you wanna go down that avenue as well. They're a bit like a hot Telecaster pickup in some ways, but they got a very different character again. So if you're looking for something with that shape, that's gonna sound great, check out the Gretsch Streamliners. I think they make some really great uh, instruments. There's a few different models as well. I'll leave some variations in the description below. Fifth on this list is an Ibanez guitar. Now Ibanez make plenty of great ES335 inspired electric guitars that also have their own vibe and they've been doing them for about 40 years or something. One of my friends has a really great SG from back in the day. It's a really beautiful guitar from Ibanez and it just, it sounds killer. So I'm gonna put this on the list. There's plenty of different ones to choose from as well when it comes to Ibanez, but the AS153 Artcore Artstar in Antique Yellow Sunburst. Now this particular instrument looks beautiful. It looks really, really good. Now this guitar is best known for jazz and blues. You can of course use it for other styles of music as well, but I think these Super 58 custom pickups they put in this instrument are best suited for clean, off clean to sort of gritty blues and that's about it. If you're gonna be playing anything heavier, odds are you should probably look for something else, but the pickups that they put in here are really, really well suited for jazz and blues. Overall, you're getting a really beautiful guitar, something that's a little bit different. As I mentioned, best suited for jazz and blues, from the art core guitars that I've had a chance to play, they don't handle heavy amounts of gain at all, unless you're plugging into, say, an audio interface and you don't have an amp behind you. If you have an amp behind you, odds are something like this will take off, but given that it is still a humbucker guitar, you can give it a go, but to my ear and the way that these pickups are voiced, best suited to jazz and blues. If you play other styles of music on AS153, let me know in the comments below. Coming in at the sixth spot is another guitar brand that has made a couple of these other lists because they just make great instruments and they've been getting better and better. But they've also been getting more expensive over the years as well. So these are still under half of the price, at least for me here in Australia and mostly in the US as well. If you're gonna buy a 335, these are still way, way cheaper. This is the Eastman T386. Now 386 reminds me of the old CPU days, but anyway, that's a whole other story. Now, this is a very, very traditional ES335 style guitar. 
that you can also see has a few appointments on it that make it stand out in comparison to some of the lesser expensive models. Not all of them, but some of them. Now we get binding along the fretboard, which looks really cool. We also get binding on the F-holes, and I think this natural sort of cherry finish looks so much nicer than a lot of the others on this list. I really think this looks like an old guitar, just as it is, it looks beautiful. It looks really, really classy. I also love the fact that the pick guard is a little bit more traditional in its shape. I think it suits the aesthetic of this guitar a whole lot more. Now, the only thing I don't like about Eastman guitars, and I'm not that much of a headstock snob, I'll play any guitar, and it's not a deal break for me, but I don't really like the headstock on the Eastman instrument here. It just looks a little bit too squished at the bottom for me and, or a little bit too wide at the top. I'm not sure if, which is the problem there, but it just looks a little bit odd. Now, I've seen so many of these and I've played so many Eastman guitars at Jerry's Lefty Guitars over in Sarasota, Florida. And I've seen these at guitar shows here locally as well. And they're just really beautiful instruments. Like I said, they're getting more expensive as the years go by, but you are buying a really nice electric guitar. So this would make a really great alternative to an ES-335 if you're on or wanting to spend a little bit less. We still get an ebony fretboard, we get a maple neck, we get the 12 inch uh, fretboard radius. The neck profile on this one is a traditional C as well, so you are getting pretty much what you'd expect out of a, a either a 50s or a 60s style ES-335 depending on which shape of neck you want to go for. The 60s are a little bit thinner on the most part, the 50s are just that little bit fatter. We get the medium jumbo frets as well, which is a great you know, thing to have on the guitar. You definitely don't want to be getting anything with smaller frets. We get the Goto stop tailpiece, so they've got good hardware on this instrument as well. Swift craft connectors and switching and all that kind of stuff. So these are quality instruments. They are made offshore, but who cares, right? If the guitar's good, it's good. And these are definitely a great instrument. Another highly overlooked instrument, in my opinion, are Eastman guitars. I think because they started out maybe as a lesser expensive guitar, there were already some more expensive ones like the El Rey, which is one of my favorites of all time. Yeah, but they were generally like known for lesser expensive guitars, but as the price has crept up, the quality's crept up, and some of the ones that I've seen recently at the guitar show last year were some of the nicest ones I've ever seen. The finishes were second to none. So Eastman guitars easily make this list. This guitar will be well suited to just about anything that your traditional 335 can handle musically. Number seven on this list is the Epiphone Dot. I love these guitars. I've owned two of them. I've also owned a Gibson, and I really felt like the Epiphone Dot ticked all the boxes. I really regret getting rid of my first one. It was my main gigging instrument for years. It had a fat neck. It was nice and simple. The pickup sounded great, nice and simple in its design didn't have any sort of blinginess to it, but it was a cherry red and it sounded killer. Some of the best gigs I've got from when I first started playing were using the Epiphone Dot and it was just a beautiful, beautiful instrument. So yeah, I can highly recommend these. They've changed a little bit over the years. They've sort of slimmed the neck down on a lot of them now, but if you can find an Epiphone Dot used or even new, you're still gonna get a great instrument. But if you want the fat and neck one, you're gonna have to go back a few years to see if you can find one because, oh, like not back in time, a time machine, but you're gonna have to go find one on the used market or hopefully find one in a shop that hasn't been sold for years and years. But they're really solid instruments. The things I love about them, the weight is good, they handle overdrive great. And one of the key things that no one talks about with 335s, I'm gonna throw out there, is if you're playing loudly with an amp behind you, you'll feel air coming out of the F holes. This was something that freaked me out the first time I felt it. I had a t-shirt on. I could feel something hit my arm. Like I felt like a vibration. I went, oh, did I just get shocked? And it wasn't, it was the air coming out of the F hole. So if you haven't experienced that, get an amplifier, crank it up behind you and there's certain frequencies that will trigger it and you get great sustain. These are awesome instruments. Definitely one of my favorites. I can highly recommend them. The one with the thinner neck, I didn't like quite as much as the one with the thick neck, but the Epiphone Dots, are really solid instruments, and for the kind of money you're paying for them, it's an absolute no-brainer. Check them out. Coming in at the eighth spot on this list is a brand that I always don't pronounce properly, and I always hear about it in the comments, so I'm gonna try it a different way today. Hugstrom, is that close? Hugstrom? The Hugstrom Viking, I always say Hagstrom Viking, and everyone gives me grief. So I'm gonna just say that these guitars are pretty damn good. The things I like about them, is their visual design, very reminiscent of a 335, 
You have a unique tailpiece system as well on this guitar, which sets it apart from pretty much all of the others on this list. And we have the toggle switch to change pickups up on the top horn. I really like that. I mentioned it before. I think that's a really great addition and something that separates it. These come in left and right-handed models as well, which is really cool. And they're still very affordable. You can get them in a whole lot of different colors as well from the sunburst look to the cherry red to uh, Elvis white shoe look, <laughs> whatever you want to call that. Yeah, it's strange to a black as well. I actually think the black looks really cool. Now, I got to point out a couple of things. I've tried a few of these now and I don't necessarily love the neck pickup. I find them a little bit too uh, rolled out in the high end. They just don't really capture that classic tone. They're a different sort of sound. These, they call them the HJ50 humbucking pickups, but I find that neck pickup just a little too muddy, but where these guitars shine, both pickups together with the neck down just a little bit. I've actually tried one of these in the live mix, and the way that I ran it was just to leave it on bridge pickup and to use my volume control to get my cleaner tones or just wind it back up. Now these handle overdrive fine, they also sound fairly nice clean as well. But just like I mentioned before, I'm not an overly uh, huge fan of that neck pickup. I've heard far better pickups, even on less expensive guitars. So um, that's not to belittle uh, these guitars if you do already own one, but I feel like, yeah, the, the thing that sort of lets them down is that neck pickup. And after testing two or three of them, it's something that I've, I've noticed. They just don't have the chirp. I almost feel like it needs a high pass filter to put in them if they don't already, if they haven't started including them because when you turn down on that neck pickup, I find it pretty much unusable, but that's my experience with it. But in terms of just its visuals, its tonal ability and, and its quality and all that kind of stuff with my nitpicking aside, these are a very solid instrument. So the Hugstrom, I'm gonna try and pronounce it like that, Viking, it's definitely worth a look if you're looking for something a little bit different. Coming in on the ninth spot is a brand that I've been a huge advocate for and I've owned a couple of them coming out of China, which is the Tokai Electric Guitars. Now they make clones of everything from Tallies to Strats to Les Pauls to 335s, you name it, Tokai also make them. These were the original lawsuit guitars, but their Chinese ones are kind of like their budget version of the Japanese instruments. So I'm gonna keep this kind of short. These are as good as the Epiphones. There's no real advantage to one or the other. It's whatever you can find in your part of the world the easiest. So if you can find a Toko easier than you can, say an Epiphone Dot, they're basically the same guitar. So yeah, get whatever's cheaper and you'll get a really solid instrument. So number nine, Tokai Guitars. Coming in at number 10 is another Epiphone. And this one's kind of like a little bit more of a deluxe version over the Dot. It's the Epiphone Sheraton 2 Pro. Now this Pro model, looks the business, and this was the kind of guitar that guys like John Lee Hooker and Noel Gallagher played or play. So yeah, it's a really solid instrument. You'll also see a lot of other blues guys who are touring professionals playing Epiphone Sheratons because they're extremely solid instruments. Now it's a few things that sets this apart from some of, or at least the other Epiphone that was on this list, the Epiphone Dot. We get the Pro Buckets. So these can also be split coiled. We get the push pull pot which is really cool. We also get a Graf Tech nut, which is an upgrade over the prior one. And we also get a five piece maple walnut neck. The neck on these guitars just look absolutely beautiful. And the pickups will be an advantage over just going for the traditional Epiphone dot. But if you're on a budget and you don't ever plan on say using the uh, split coil, then just go for the Epiphone dot. But the Sheraton 2 Pro, if you like the visual of this with all the gold hardware, the big block inlays, the sort of extravagant headstock, uh, you'll definitely get a kick out of it. These are really solid instruments. They're beautiful to look at, they sound great. And yeah, they're far, far less expensive, even new than getting something like an ES-335. So if you're in the market for a 335, you don't wanna break the bank, but you still get something that's a uh, high quality instrument with some tweaks as well, being that this is kind of like the thin line version. And it also has those push pull pots. This would be a really great choice. Coming in at number 11 is Orville or Tokai or Greco. So I'm gonna kind of combine all these Japanese brands into the 11th spot because they're all great. If you can find an Orville or a Greco used, which is the only way you'll find them, they're a really solid instrument. They're 335 is rock. When I bought my Tokai, I actually compared it to a 2008 Gibson ES-335 and the Tokai left it for dead tonally, feel-wise, everything. It was a much better instrument. This was only in comparison to the 2008 
Gibson ES335 that I owned. It may have been a 2007, but somewhere around there, the pickups were muddy. It was just, yeah, it was, it was night and day. So hearing them side by side, really, I went, wow, there's a huge difference. And the price of the Gibson was so much more. I paid around $1,500 to $1,800 or something like that for a used Tokai 145L. Just a really solid instrument. And same with the Orvilles. If you can find them anywhere, just pick it up and play it and trust your instincts when it comes to those guitars. Really solid instrument. So anything out of Japan from that period is a really great choice. This next guitar brand on the list is one of the best quality instruments I've personally had my hands on. I've seen them not only here in Australia, but while I was away in Germany, it's a German brand called Maybach, or Maybach, depending how you want to say it. If you say it the Aussie way or the proper way. So they make a, a selection of instruments uh, that are actually made in the Czech Republic, which is their neighbor. But they're a German brand and they're some of the most detailed instruments out there. They make a, a range of relic guitars that will appeal to you if you're into the Strat or Tally design. They also make 3-5s, Les Paul style electrics, and some ones that are completely different to all of them. So I'll leave a link to their website in the description below, but if you can find one of their 335s, they do have a new range of them coming out. Their website doesn't seem to, to show them. I happen to see a NAM video from 2020 of Maybach guitars from Steve from Boston as well. I'll link that up in the cards and you can check them out. These guitars are about as close as you're gonna get minus the headstock design. And there's a few aesthetic differences as well when it comes to the colors and shapes. There's a couple of different ES335 style bodies as well as ones that don't have the horn. And they're the, probably the most interesting looking ones out of all of them. They're called the Little Wing series. So hopefully Jimi Hendrix's uh, LLC doesn't get onto them because they're notorious for that. <laughs> but yeah, it looks like a 335, only it doesn't have the horn. So these are the Little Wing Arch Top uh, Non Cutaway Dirty Lemon. That's the name of the color. And they also come in the Havana tobacco aged uh, look as well. Now, both of these look pretty interesting. When I first saw these instruments, I didn't like the shape of them without the horns. And then it grew on me. I was like, these actually look really great. I'd love to check these out in person. It's a guitar that I haven't personally seen these ones in person, but I've seen a number of them on Guitar Search Saturday videos that we've covered. And Rick's actually got a chance to play a couple of these in, in a shop we're at called uh, MJ Guitars. Really cool shop. If you missed that episode, I'll leave a link somewhere as well and you can check that out. But yeah, Maybach guitars are really cool. There's very few distributors that I've seen here in Australia, only one that I know of. Um, they're probably more common in Europe given that that's where they're made. But yeah, Maybach guitars or Maybach guitars, definitely go check them out. This little wing series is definitely something different. I kind of like it. Let me know what you think of them. I know they're a little bit different, especially with the pickup combinations as well, not being traditional humbuckers in their, all of their guitars, but they do have those as well. But yeah, very cool design. Uh, and yeah, it almost looks like an acoustic, but it looks better. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts. And lucky last on this list, coming in at number 13, is Heritage Guitars. Now you might be saying, hang on a sec, aren't Heritage Guitars more expensive than Gibson's? They can be, absolutely. They're about $200 more expensive retail than their Gibson counterpart. And these are handmade in the US, all that kind of stuff. The Kalamazoo factory, if you know the history of Heritage Guitars, they were kind of like an offshoot of Gibson guitars. So they're up there, same type of quality, some would argue far better. But they are more expensive new, but if you're buying them on the used market, you can save yourself a fortune unless you're shopping at reverb.com, where you'll end up paying top dollar for a used instrument. So look, and that's, I'm not saying that as a dig to reverb, but this is what I've noticed. If you buy them anywhere else, they're far less expensive than their Gibson counterpart. I've always found that the, the household name brands hold their value far more than some of these other brands, unless you're in the know. Same with G&L, for example. G&Ls just don't resale anywhere near as well as the Fender counterpart. And after dealing with both of those guitars over the years, I can tell you that's absolutely true. And same when it comes to heritage instruments. Beautiful instruments, if you, can, if you wanna go out and spend top dollar on a new one, go for it. You're getting a very, very solid instrument that's every way as good or better than the Gibson counterpart. But where you'll save yourself the money and get the best guitar that you can get for less money will be on the used market. So check Craigslist, check out all the, you know, if you're in Australia, Gumtree, eBay, a lot of other options, just look around for them. Odds are you'll find them for far less money than their Gibson counterparts. So yeah, Heritage Guitars, beautiful instruments. I'm yet to own one. I've played plenty of them, but I'm yet to own one. So 
Let me know what you think of this list, and if I miss something, please let me know in the comments below. Just know this list comes through my own personal experience of either owning them, testing them out, playing them, or reviewing them, or I've either just picked the right-handed counterpart up and I've listened to a friend play them. So yeah, there's some guitars on this list that aren't made for lefties, but all of them I've had some experience with over the years as well. So let me know what you think of this list. If I did miss something, please let me know. If you wanna see other videos like this, I'll leave the playlist in the description or also up in the cards as I mentioned earlier. And you can check that out. So thanks again for watching, catch you soon. See ya.